So uh, I will present work on uh, using long read isoseq sequencing to sequence highly similar transcripts from multi-copy genes. And this is joint work at Penn State University with uh, Marta Tomaskiewicz, Katarina Makova, and Paul Medvedev, who is my postdoc advisor. So uh, what is multi-copy genes? Multi-copy genes are genes that exist in several highly similar or identical copies on the genome. And uh, they are expected to be relatively common. So roughly 5 to 10% of all genes in the human genome are subject to some kind of copy number alteration. And many of these have been linked to various diseases, disorders, and traits. However, the distinct sequence of these gene copies are still relatively poorly characterized um, due to the high sequence identity. So some of the previous methods to assay these sequences has been to use either IlluminRNA-seq or Sanger sequencing. But with IlluminRNA-seq, you cannot face uh, variants that exist at a distance larger than the read length. And um, with Sanger sequencing, it's in general slow and expensive technique. So our aim with this um, project is to use isoseq sequencing to fully uh, face the different transcripts from highly similar copies and ultimately distinguish the, uh, the different copies and assign transcripts specific to these distinct gene copies. So uh, what is PacBio isoseq sequencing? It's a method to sequence a transcript from end to end. Uh, so through the PacBio system, you can go several passes through the transcript, and you can use these passes to call a consensus sequence. So in this case, we have two and a half passes in this figure. And um, the product of this consensus calling step is usually referred to as a circular consensus sequence. Uh, I will refer to these simply as reads or CCS reads. And so these are full-length representation of transcripts. I assume at least one full pass through the entire transcript in this read. And these usually have, uh, these reads have a lower error rate than uh, regular packed biosequencing due to the consensus calling. So what is the bioinformatic problem? Uh, so we're giving a set of reads, and they have various error rates, where the error rate depends largely on the number of passes. Uh, in the consensus step. And we want to correct the errors to arrive at a set of non-redundant and error-free transcripts. And in our specific case, these transcripts might be highly similar, differing in only a couple bases. Uh, so some of the current methods to, to process general isoseq sequencing reads has been to either use uh, reference base, so you can al align the reads to the reference and you correct any difference with respect to the reference. You can use Illumina reads to error correct the long reads, or you can use PacBio's own software to deal with this, uh, to error correct the reads, which is called ICE. So, uh, but none of these are, approaches are designed for uh, transcripts that are highly similar. So to this end, we developed an algorithm that we call ISOCON. And the input to ISOCON is a set of full-length CCS reads and also their base call quality values. And the output is a set of final predicted transcripts. And the algorithm is structured into two main steps. The first step is a clustering and error correction step producing a set of candidate transcripts uh, that are believed to be more accurate than the original reads. Uh, and in the second step, we do statistical testing of uh, all the candidates to kind of filter out the candidates that still contains errors. So sorry, I forgot to mention here, in all the slides, the red star I indicate is an error, and the other boxes are variants. So that's, uh, yeah, important. Um, and uh, yeah, so the second step aimed to filter these transcripts con is still containing errors out to arrive at the set of final transcripts. Uh, so I'll walk through the sort of overview of the algorithm here. So in the first step, the error correction step, we define something called the nearest neighbor graph. And here, reads are nodes, and we assign a directed edge between R and R prime if R prime minimizes the alignment distance to R. 
So here we have an example. We have eight reads. They have various error rates, uh, as you can see. And we draw the, these directed edges. And in this given graph, um, the read at the top uh, minimizes the alignment distance to all the other reads. Um, we then partition the nodes by selecting the, the nodes or the, the reads to which most other nodes reach. In this given case, uh, the whole graph becomes one partition because of this read minimizes the distance to all the other reads. We then form a, per, um, a consensus sequence of all the reads in the partition, and we error correct or we correct a fraction of the positions in the reads that differs to this consensus sequence. So in the first step, we might have something looking like this. So a set of um, partially corrected reads. Now we go on again and we uh, create the um, directed edges. So this is the second iteration then. And uh, again, we partition the nodes and you can see it's more separated in this iteration. We again form consensus, correct the fraction of the errors and so on and so forth until we arrive at a step where no read is unique anymore. And at that time we define convergence. So as you can see in this example, we have gone from eight unique reads down to four unique candidates. Now we, uh, the final thing we do is that we take these four unique candidates and we assign the original CCS reads to their best matching candidate. And that will be the output of the first step. So in the second step, we aim to filter the candidates. So the input in this step is uh, the candidate transcripts we produced in the previous step, and also the original CCS reads assigned to the best candidate. And the output here is the uh, final output of Isocom, which is, are the predicted transcripts. So the overview of the algorithm is that um, we do pairwise significant tests between all of the candidates, and then we remove a fraction of the candidates that are non-significant. Then we reassign the reads to, uh, that were assigned to the, re the candidates that was filtered out. And then we kind of do this pairwise uh, testing again and so on until all candidates remaining are significant. So the final thing I want to go through as for the methods is what is a statistical test in this context? Uh, so a given statistical test is we have two candidate transcripts here, C, uh, I denote with C and R, and reads that are assigned to either one of them. And the output will be the, a significance value for C. So as you can see in this figure, we have uh, the two candidate transcripts. Um, here R stands for sort of reference with respect to this test, and here we have the candidate. And we identify the positions that are different between the two candidates. In this case, we have three positions, and I refer to them as variant positions. And the assumptions of the statistical test is that reads are independently generated, errors within reads are independently generated. In a position where the two candidates agree, uh, they cannot both be wrong. These are other words for saying we do not care to model how reads behave in the regions where there is no variance. Uh, and also that the reference is in this given test is error-free. That would be this uh, candidate. So uh, the formulation, uh, the null hypothesis is that all observed variant positions are a product of errors in reads. And we define for each read a binary random variable, xi, that we set to one if the read has all of the variant positions jointly together and, um, and zero otherwise. And in this given um, figure here, we have that only two out of the, I think, six reads here has all variants together. So these will be one. And uh, under the null hypothesis, this binary random variable is Bernoulli distributed uh, with a parameter that is the product of the error rate or the error probability in the read over each of the J positions. And finally, we def uh, define our test statistic is, you can think of it as a weighted support. Uh, it's a sum of the binary random variables with a weight assigned to them. So the weight is this wi that is defined as this um, expression. The intuition behind this is 
uh, largely that if you have a circular consensus read with very high read accuracy, the PIJ, the, the error rate, will be small, meaning that uh, the weight will be large. So basically, we trust higher quality reads more. So it's kind of intuitive in that sense. And uh, finally, we get a simple p-value by a uh, one-sided uh, test. We're only interested in support higher than the one we observe. And, uh, that's how we get the significance value. Uh, so that was all regarding the, the algorithm. Um, so I'll just briefly mention uh, that we did a lot of uh, different simulated uh, data set experiments um, where we compared our tool to ICE, which is PacBio's algorithm to process ICE-seq reads. And we compare different uh, for gene lengths, mutation rates of, of genes, re various read depths, isoform structures, and relative abundances of transcripts. This is just a general example showing you the um, sort of the trend. So we have recall on the three um, higher panels, and we have mutation rate. Uh, from left is the highest mutation rate, and, and then you have more higher similar uh, transcripts to the right, and then you have precision in, um, in the three lower panels. The general trend is that we see we recall naturally increases as read depth of the experiment increases. That's shown on the x-axis. Um, in general, we reach a recall of one as uh, the read depth increases, which is not always the case for other algorithms such as ICE here. Uh, but more notably, we always uh, have a high precision, and we believe this is due to the statistical testing we employ to filter out spurious candidates. So, for instance, you can see that as read depth uh, increases, uh, ICE precision goes down to zero, and that's basically, we believe, they, they generate a lot of redundant candidates with errors. So, um, that was it regarding the simulated experiment. And so, as for the real data, we uh, sequenced both isoseq reads and Illumina data from uh, the human Ampliconic Y gene families, nine of the gene families. And they're mostly located in palindromic arms on the Y chromosome. They have a high diversity in the copy counts between individuals, and they're characterized by having very high sequence identity differing in only a couple of bases. And uh, they have been linked to various male fertility disorders. So uh, what I'm showing you here is the number of unique sequences, so you can think of them as unique transcripts predicted uh, for four different methods. So we, we sequenced two uh, individuals, so here as sample one and sample two with all uh, this data. And the first method is just the CCS reads by themselves as a standalone method to produce transcripts. The second one, proofread, is a technique to use Illumina reads to error correct these reads. And the third one is PacBio's algorithm, and we have our algorithm as ISCON. Um, and we don't have the, any ground true value, so we just see the number of predictions here, but wh what is the quality? So we used three different techniques to uh, decipher the quality of these predictions. So first of all, we used Illumina reads, we used matches to existing databases, and we used um, the number of identical predictions between two samples. Uh, as you can see, for um, with the Illumina reads, we have the highest ratio of uh, supported bases, um, showing here in the first row, 99%. And we also have by far the highest number of transcripts that are supported with Illumina reads from end to end. So this is the second row here. Uh, as for the exact matches to, to ensemble, we have one less exact match uh, compared to proofread. However, they predict more than 10 times number the transcript, so we still feel like there is a very favorable uh, recall precision trade-off here. And as for the concordance, so the number of identical uh, matches between the two samples, we don't have a true num number for this but um, we believe that the two individuals should share a lot of gene copies, meaning that they share a lot of transcripts. So we, in this context, we believe that a higher number is better. And so you can see that Isocon has 32% of the predictions are shared between samples. This is also another metric for saying that the algorithm is cons consistent because we, we're doing de novo clustering here. All of these approaches are de novo 
in that context. So um, this is kind of a consistency check as well. Uh, and finally, we took the predictions that ISOCOM produced, and we here you can sh uh, see the left histogram is separating the gene copies into uh, the nine different uh, gene families that we sequenced. And we took these predicted transcripts and we clustered them uh, down to this distinct gene copies, and that's by inference, by checking if they have SNP and uh, small indels uh, variants. And so the histogram to the right shows the predicted number of distinct gene copies for each family. And the error bars here are what has been predicted with other sequencing techniques in other studies, and you can see it largely correlates. Now, the main point here I want to make is this sort of exact copy number prediction comes with many caveats, so I've listed some of them here. But we, we don't claim that we can predict an accurate copy number. Um, what we do think uh, we can do is that uh, Isocon can predict highly accurate transcripts, enabling us to uh, cluster the transcripts into distinct gene copies and also assign the transcripts to these uh, different gene copies. So basically we can derive the sequences of these distinct copies. That's what we're kind of pushing for here, not the exact copy number. Uh, so I've shown you how to uh, sort of a study on using isoseq reads for highly similar transcripts. And we believe, uh, I presented an algorithm isocon that we believe have high precision and high accuracy in general that enables us to do this kind of distinct copy reconstruction and assign transcripts specific to these dif different copies. And for future work, we want to sequence DNA to remove some of the false copies due to, for instance, RNA editing. We want to apply this de novo approach to other primates and also extend ISOCON to general non-targeted data sets. Thank you. Uh, what would be the difference between those two, your ability to... Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, so we, for now, we simulated just uh, a third each probability of either Indel, uh, um, SNP, or, um, uh, sorry, a deletion, insertion, or SNP, and we just choose a base pair at random. So in general, um, we have higher um, precision, or we can call with higher confidence if we have SNPs. That's the general trend of uh, the setup of our statistical step. In general, deletions are the uh, hardest to call with this setup. And, and if, but the real data will have more deletions than anything else, right? Uh, From the error. Yes, so actually, yeah. So original pack biosequencing usually are prone to insertions. But in CCS reads, due to the consensus calling step, we actually, what we see is mostly deletions. So they have a different error rate than original. And yes, deletions are the hardest to call that we see. Yeah, thanks. Um, hi, so would it be possible to apply this to nanopore reads, or is the error rate just too high without the circular consensus? Um, theoretically, it should be possible. Um, practically, with the given implementation right now, it might be, um, yeah, we might need to work on the implementation, but I in theory, yes. So this is right, so for real data is one of the ways how to validate it is to subsampling. Did you do subsampling? In other words, you can remove half of the reads and see if you get the same results. Yes, we did not do any subsampling, that's, but. That's, that's is like one of the ways. I mean, yeah. when you don't know the truth, at least how stable you are. Yeah, definitely. That's a good suggestion. Yeah. Uh, and also, the problem is that maybe it's better to get twice as many reads, bug by reads, than more accurate reads. Because then you, you can do this consensus yourself. Yes. So, so one of the things here is that this is a de novo approach. So in terms of if you have a reference, sometimes it could be preferable to use a reference and, and cluster in. We didn't see that because with our gene families, they have so many copies. So, so we have tried that, but it works out worse, essentially, uh, because of the alignment base. You have to align to the reference. But uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. OK, thank you again.